Okay, so now we're going to move on to section 10.7. And in this section, we're now going to be solving equations that contain radicals. So can, equations with square roots, um, in, in some cases cube roots, or fourth roots, but usually just square roots. That's what we're going to focus on in this, in this video, in this section rather. All right. So, yeah, the, the, the primary th uh, uh, idea that we're going to use here, the concept we're going to use is when, when you have two things that are equal, say A and B, if, if they're equal, you can raise both sides to any power you want, right? You can take A squared on the left as long as you square the right side as well, right? You can cube the left side and cube the right side as well. So all these are the same thing. So, right, so this positive integer is just the exponent you want on both sides, right? So if you square the left side, you have to square the right side. If you cube the left side, you have to cube the right side. Right? So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the main concept that we're going to use here, okay? And we're going to use it to solve uh, an equation. Let's just start with a simple one. Suppose you want to solve the equation the square root of x is equal to 4. Now, I grant you that a lot of you can probably guess the answer here, all right? This, this one is, is maybe a little too easy. It's one that you can probably guess, right? But in general, they're, they're not all going to be this easy. And so we, we should try to figure out how would you do this if you, if you didn't know the answer, right? So the idea is to get rid of the square root, right? You want to isolate the square root. It's already isolated, right? It's already on the left side. And it's, it's just a square root, nothing else on the left side, right? Then you want to raise both sides to the power of the index. The index here is 2 because it's a square root, right? So what's the thing that undoes the square root, right? What undoes the square root? So if I have the square root of x equals 4, and I want to get rid of this 2, what do I have to do? Well, you have to square it. Right? If you take a square root and you square it, that undoes the square root. Now, if I do that to the left side, I better do that to the right side. Remember, that's, that's the golden rule of equations. Whatever you do to the one side, you do to the other side. So notice what happens here. That gets rid of the square root, and you just are left with x. On the right side, you have 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. And so if it wasn't obvious, at this point, hopefully it is, Right? So the next thing to do, of course, is to check. And if we replace x with 16, we get that the square root of 16 is equal to 4, which, of course, is true, because the square root of 16 is 4. 4 equals 4. So now we know for sure that this is the correct solution. Okay. Okay. So I, I just wanted to start off with an easy one. But this is the basic method, right? You isolate the square root right, on one side of the equation, usually the left side. It could be the right side, but usually the left, right? And then you raise both sides to whatever the index is. If it's a square root, you're squaring both sides. If it's a cube root, you cube both sides, and so on, right? And then once you get rid of the square roots, well, it's, you might have some algebra to do, but you could, you know, that's probably not the hard part. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes it can be a, a little tricky. Uh, but obviously in this problem, there's really nothing to solve. Once you squared both sides, that gave you the answer right away. Right? And the, the fourth step is to check your answer. And, and actually here, this, this checking becomes very important um, because if you don't check, you might end up putting down a wrong answer. In some, in some problems, this 16 might not actually work. So checking your answer is very important here. You're checking for extraneous solutions. If you remember in Chapter 7, we also had problems, uh, equations where we solved them and we got extraneous solutions. All right, so let's go on to another problem now. Okay, so here we want to solve the square root of 1 minus 5y and then plus 2. Notice the plus 2 is not under the square root. There's no square root over the 2, and that equals 6. So we want to solve for y, right? In other words, our goal is to get y equals y equals y, right? What is y here? Okay, so in this case, it's not obvious. At least, I, you know, I don't, I don't, it, it's not obvious to me, 
right? So we got some work to do here. So remember what step one is, isolate the radical. So we have the radical, the square root on the left side, but the two does not have a square root with it, right? So first thing we have to do is actually get rid of that two. We're gonna subtract two from the left. That means we have to subtract two from the right. And when we do that, we're left with the square root of, sorry, that's a one, the square root of one minus five y, and then plus zero equals six minus two is four. So that was our step one, isolate the radical, right? If you don't have just the square root on the left, if you have something else on the left, like the plus two, you have to get rid of that. You have to subtract it from both sides, right? right. In the previous problem, we didn't, that was not necessary because there was nothing else on the left side other than the square root, right? All right, what's step two? Remember step two? Step two is the key thing here. We wanna get rid of that square root. All right, so what undoes the square root, right? Square it, square both sides, right? And so if you square the left side, that just cancels the square root and you just get one minus five y. On the right side, we have four squared, which we did that already, right? Four times four is 16. Okay, and now step three is to just solve the equation. I mean, you, you presumably can take it from here. This is nothing new. Um, at least I hope you can do it. So, I'll, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll give you like 30 seconds to think about it um, and try to do it yourself. Okay, maybe not 30 seconds. That's a little long. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, hopefully by now you've got the answer, right? You subtract one from both sides. And when you subtract one, you get zero minus five y equals 16 minus one is 15. And now, divide by negative five, right? This is negative five times y, the opposite of multiplying by y. Uh, sorry, the opposite of multiplying by negative five is dividing by negative five. So divide by negative five, that cancels the negative fives. So y is equal to 15 divided by negative five, which is negative three. And that's our solution, right? Or is it, right? All important, step four, check. So the original equation was this, one minus five y, so the square root of one minus five y plus two is equal to six. So if I replace this y here with negative three, let's see what happens. We have one minus five times negative three plus two, does that really equal six? So let's see, negative five times negative three is positive 15, right? And one plus 15 is 16. And the square root of 16 is four. And four plus two, well, yeah, that's six. That works, right? So we're done. We got the right answer. Y is definitely negative three. That's the solution. So we solved this, right? We solved this equation and we got our, we got our answer. We got our question mark here, right? The question mark here is negative three. Yeah, now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, how could it be negative, right? Earlier, didn't you say that you can't take the square root of a negative number? The square root of negative three is imaginary. And that's true, but at no point are we taking the square root of a negative number, right? This y is what's negative three, but we multiplied the negative three by a negative five, we got a positive 15, and when you add one, you got 16, positive 16. So at no point did we actually take the square root of a negative number here. But that's something to watch out for, right? When, the, when you do see this, then you know something's wrong. Then you know, yeah, maybe this isn't the actual answer. But it worked here, and we didn't get any imaginary numbers here, right? Okay. Okay. You're not likely to see a whole lot of problems with cube roots, okay? But again, let's just do one just to make sure. Um, and, you know, just in case you do see it, say, in the homework um, or on a test, although I would say it's unlikely, but not impossible. All right, so what's the first step, right? Remember, the first step is to isolate the radical. There's nothing else on the left here, right? It's just the cube root of all this stuff. 
right? Notice you cannot add the 15 to both sides. That's a big mistake because the 15 is under the square root, or sorry, cube root. Okay, so you got to get rid of the cube root first, right? So there's nothing to isolate here. It's already isolated. So we're going on to step two. Step two is to get rid of the cube roots. Right? So now what's the opposite of taking the cube root? Cubing it. Raise it to the power three. That cancels this three here, right? But if you do that on the left, you've got to do it on the right as well. Okay, so... Yeah, what's next? Well, the, the cube root cancels the cube, or vice versa. The, the cube cancels the cube root, and on the left side, you're just left with the 6x minus the 15. On the right side, you're left with 3 cubed, right? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And again, now you can take it from here, right? You just have to solve this equation, and um, yeah, that's, that's the easy part. At least it is here, right? Add the 15 to both sides. And that gives you 6x. Oop, sorry, wrong color. Let's try that again. 6x on the left, and then 42 on the right. Now divide by the 6, and that gives us 7. And that should be the answer. Don't take my word for it. Let's check. Plug it back in the original equation here. So instead of 6 times x minus 15, it's 6 times 7 minus 15. And is that equal to 3? Well, 6 times 7 is 42. And 42 minus 15 is, well, 27. And what's the cube root of 27? Of course, that's 3. So 3 equals 3. Now we know this is correct. So the, the solution is x equals 7. Now I've been doing a lot of, we've been doing all our examples so far, we get nice numbers, right? We got 7, negative 3, 16. They don't have to be, right? They could be fractions. They could be fractions like 1 half or 2 thirds or things like that. So just be aware of that, that you're not always going to get nice numbers. And maybe let's do one where you do get a fraction. Okay. So we want to solve negative 5 plus the square root of 7c minus 8 equals 2. Again, usually you're going to have an x here, but it's just to show you that they, they do give different letters. The book likes to give different variables here, and that's fine. Well, step 1 is always to isolate the square root, right? We can't square both sides yet. Well, I, I shouldn't say that you can, but you're making it a lot harder because, of course, you have to FOIL this now. So before you do that, you might want to add the 5 to both sides first. So that gives you the square root of 7c minus 8 equals 2 plus 5 is 7, right? So now we've isolated the square root, right? Square root. So how do you undo the square root? You square it. Square both sides. Okay. Sorry. Step 3. So that gets rid of the square root. You just get the 7c minus the 8, what was under the square root. And that equals 7 squared. 7, right? 7 times 7 is 49. And you can take it from here, right? Now you know how to solve this, right? You add the 8 to both sides. 49 plus 8, 57. And now divide by 7. And 57 over 7, I don't think that's reducible, right? It's certainly not a whole number, but 7 is a prime number. I think 57 is a prime number, um, and so noth nothing cancels there. Uh, yeah, hang on. F 57 is not a prime number. Um, I don't know. I think it's 3 times 19, right? Yeah, 57 is 3 times 19 where 3 and 19 are prime numbers. But notice, nothing, the point is nothing cancels, right? But yes, 57 is not prime. It is 3 times 19. Either way, since nothing cancels, you leave it alone, right? This is, this is correct. Or is it? Uh, again, we got we to gotta check, right? So step four, 
Well, step three is to solve. We did that already. Step four is to check. So here's the, right, here's the original equation. Just replace the C with 57 over 7. And even though you get a fraction, um, you see what happens here. The 7s cancel. Minus 8. Sorry. Sorry for writing a little bit smaller here. But yep, this 7 divided by 7 is 1. And that leaves us with negative 5 plus the square root of 57 minus 8. Does that really equal 2? So 57 minus 8 is 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. And 7 minus 5, negative 5 plus 7 is 2. 2 equals 2. There we go. Now we know for sure this is correct. OK. Anyways, I just, I right, so another one like this where you get the uh, a fraction as an answer, and that's perfectly fine, as long as you simplify or reduce to lowest terms. Okay, on to the next one. All right, so this is the square root of x minus 5 plus 12 equals 5. We want to solve for x. So first thing we should do, of course, is isolate the square root. This plus 12 should not be there. We should subtract 12 from both sides, and that isolates the square root. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. Sorry for getting 7 a lot. Uh, but in this case, it's negative 7. And we'll see that's kind of important here. Next thing you would do, of course, is square both sides, right? Because it's the square root. Again, you might see a cube root once in a great while, but this is a square root. So to cancel the square root, you square it. And that means you square both sides. Right, so you get x minus 5 on the left. And be careful, right? You're squaring the negative 7, right? This is, this is not negative 7 squared, right? Negative 7 squared would be negative 49. But that's not what we want here. Ne this is negative 7 times negative 7. It's a negative times a negative. It's positive 49. Okay, so be very careful of that, right? Positive 49. Now... Well, you can take it from here, right? You have to solve this equation. You just add 5 to both sides. 49 plus 5 is 54. So another nice answer. All right, so there's our solution. Or is it, right, remember the all-important check, check, always check. All right, so here's the original equation, um, the square root of x minus 5 plus 12 equals 5. So if I replace x with 54, this x here with 54, what happens? We get the square root of 54 minus 5, that's a 5, plus 12 equals 5. And that's the question, right? Well, 54 minus 5 is 49, right? under the square root, that is 49. And the square root of 49 is 7, right? And we get 7 plus 12. 7 plus 12 is 19. But 19 is not the same number as 5. 5 does not equal 19, right? Uh-oh. See, this is why you have to check. It didn't work. We plugged it in, and, uh, well, let's make sure I did everything right, right? 54 minus 5 is indeed 49, and the square root of 49 is 7, 7 plus 12. Okay, so it, I did everything correct here, but uh, we got nonsense. 19 does not equal 5. So what that tells me is that 54 is the wrong answer. So x is not 54. But then what is the answer? If that's not the answer, did I do something wrong here? And the answer is no, I, I didn't really do anything wrong. But we, we, noted, we didn't notice something very peculiar in, the, in this first step here. After this first step, we isolated the square root, right? And we got this equation here. Square root of x minus 5 equals negative 7. Now, why is, why is that peculiar? There, there's something really weird here, right? On the right side, this is a negative number, negative 7, right? But remember, on the left side, this is Im implied that there's a plus here, right? You don't write the plus, right? When you, you know, when you have 8, 
you could write positive 8, but it's assumed to be a positive, so you don't have to write it. But that's the issue, right? The, this is a positive equaling a negative. That doesn't happen, right? You don't get negative 8 equals 8. That's just wrong. Okay. So even at this very first, after the very first step of subtracting the, the negative 12 here, um, we got this equation, and you notice that you can't have a positive equaling a negative. So right there, that tells me that there's no way to solve this, right? So, so the answer to the problem is that there is no answer. There is no solution here, right? We, we did everything right. You can square both sides. But when you square both sides, that has the effect possibly of adding a solution that's not really there, right? That happened to add this solution, this 54. This is a phantom solution. It's not really there, right? Well, I should say phantom in, in quotation marks, right? It's In math, we call this an extraneous solution. It's a solution that you get when you solve the equation. You don't do anything wrong, and yet you get the wrong answer, right? 54 is not the answer. The correct answer is no solution, right? So this has no solution. And that is a possibility, right? That is a possibility. Okay, and just, just to drive home that point, let's solve this equation here. This is very similar to the very first one we did, um, except I'm changing the 4 to a negative 4. I'm changing the x to an r, okay? So just a different letter, right? So Again, you might guess, well, then this has to be, you know, this has to be 16, right? Because the square root of 16 is 4. But we know that's not going to work. So, sorry, 16. If you check, if you plug in r equals 16, you don't get negative 4. You get positive 4. And most definitely, 4 is not negative 4. So the answer is not 16, right? We know that's wrong. Well, then you might guess, well, of, cor of course not. It had to be negative 16, right? But that's also wrong. If you check, if you plug in negative 16, that's not negative 4, right? The square root of negative 16 is not a real number. Right? It's an imaginary number. And an imaginary number cannot equal a real number, right? It, it might be a negative number, but right, negative 4 is still a real number. It's on the number line, right? Draw the number line. Here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. It's right there, it's, right? So it is a real number. But the square root of negative 16 is not on the, on the line here. Okay. Well, okay, so it's, it's not 16. It's not negative 16. What is the answer here? And there is none, right? There is no solution to this. Again, the easiest way to see that is to look at the left side being a positive number and the right side being a negative number. You can't have a positive number ever equaling a negative number, right? right. So 4 is never negative 4, right? 5 is not negative 5, right? The, the only number that, where this is true, where you have a positive equaling a negative, is 0, right? Because 0 is, is you know, both positive and negative, right? So if you have, say, negative x equal x, there is a solution to this. It's x equals 0, right? But you can try this. r equals 0 doesn't work either because you don't get 0. You get, right, you're supposed to be, it's supposed to equal negative 4. In any event, um, yeah, that's, so, so I wouldn't worry about that. The, the whole point of this is to just show you that there are some equations where there's no solution. And this, this is maybe hopefully an obvious one because the square root is always a positive and that can never be a negative. Okay. On the other hand, um, let's just make sure we're clear about this. Suppose the equation was minus the square root of r equals negative 4. Okay. Well, See, that's, that takes care of the issue, right? On the left side, this was a positive square root. Now, it's a negative square root, right? So, there's a negative on both sides. And if there's a negative on both sides, well, you can cancel the negatives, right? 
In other words, just multiply both sides by, I'm trying to find the right color here, just multiply by negative 1 on both sides. Right, and that cancels the negative 1, and you get positive square root of r equals positive 4, right? Negative times negative is positive. And now we know the answer is 16, right? Because the square root of 16 is 4. Right. And so when we check, let's go back and check now, we get negative square root of 16 equals negative 4, right? This is not imaginary anymore because the negative is on the outside. If the negative is on the outside, what's the square root of 16? It's 4. And so because there's a negative in front, it's, it's now negative 4. But the right side is also negative 4, right? Which means negative 4 equals negative 4. That's a correct statement. And so this is correct. But that's only because we had a negative in front on both sides, right? In the previous problem, there was no negative on the, on the left side. It was a positive, and that cannot be a negative. So I hope that helps. Okay, on to the next one. We want to solve this equation. x minus the square root of x minus 2 equals 4. Okay, and this one's a little trickier, right? This one's a little trickier, in particular because we have this x on the left here, right? And remember, the first step is to isolate the square root on both sides. So let me just copy this down so we have a reference point here. This is x minus the square root of x minus 2 equals 4. So we can't have this x on the left, so we're going to have to subtract x from both sides, right? That's step one. Subtract the x from both sides. And notice that does not get rid of the negative sign. We have this negative square root of x minus 2 equals 4 minus x. And, you know, if you're worried about that, you know, you can't have a negative equaling a positive, well, we don't know the right side is positive. It depends on what x is, right? If x is 1, well, we know that's not going to work because this is, this is a positive equaling a negative. But, you know, if x is, I don't know, uh, 5, then this is a negative 1 on the left and it's a negative on the right. So that might work, right? So, so yeah, don't, don't necessarily be concerned about this. In fact, here's what we can do. We can multiply both sides by negative 1 yeah, on both sides. And that changes this to a positive square root of x minus 2, and this becomes negative 4 plus x, or just x minus 4. Okay, so that was step one. We isolated the square root. There's nothing left on the left side other than the square root, right? Square root of x minus 2. Okay, well, remember, you can't add the 2 yet because you got to get rid of the square root first. So remember, it's a square root, so again, we'll just square both sides. Square both sides. And that gets rid of the square root, so you're left with x minus 2 on the left, right? And then on the right, now be careful. This is not x squared minus 16. I hope you didn't think that. Right? This is x minus 4 times x minus 4. We have to FOIL that, right? So we got x times x is x squared. We have minus 4x minus 4x is minus 8x. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Okay, so that's step two. We got rid of the square roots, and now we should be able to solve this equation. So that's step three, solve the equation, right? Now, this one's, th this what makes this a little bit more difficult, and because of the x squared, this is a quadratic equation. Remember, quadratic equation, you can't just isolate the x here. So, and usually we want the x squared on the left, so I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to put x squared minus 8x plus 16 on the left side, and then the x minus 2 on the right side. I mean, you don't have to, but I find that more helpful. Right. So now what do we do? Well, for a quadratic equation, we have to get 0 on the right. We have to put it in standard form, right? In standard form, we need this to be 0. So we got to subtract the x from both sides. Right? And while we're at it, let's add the 2 to both sides as well. You can do it all at once. I mean, you can do it step by step, too, but I'm going to do it all at once. So we still have the x squared. Negative 8x minus 1x is negative 9x, right? 
And then 16 plus 2 is 18. And on the right, we have x minus x is 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, right? So there we go. We have our quadratic equation, and now it's in standard form. Right? Now it's in standard form. So how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, there, it turns out there's several ways we could solve this, but there's only one way that we know of at this point. Although some of you might know another way, but um, the way the only way we know how to solve this at this point is if we can factor. Can we factor this left side here? So that's chapter six, right? How do you factor? GCF, GCF is one, there's no x here, right? And so because a is one, we can use the simple method. What two numbers multiply to 18 and add to negative 9? Well, if it's not obvious, let's write it out, right? Um, we, they're, they're, add, they're multiplying to a positive, but they're adding to a negative, so they're both negative. So let's try negative 1 and negative 18. When you add those, you get uh, negative 19, but that's not negative 9. Um, if you do negative 2 times negative 9, you get 18, but negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. That's not negative 9. What about negative 3 times negative 6? There you go. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. There's our match. So it's x minus 3, x minus 6. Okay, so now we successfully factored this, and because it's factored, the rest is easy. Set them both equal to zero. So you're solving two equations. Yep, you can do that in your sleep, right? You're just adding three to both sides, and here you're adding six to both sides. So we get two answers, right? We get x equals three, or we also get x equals six. So those are two possible answers, right? So before, well, okay, so before we highlight them, before we make sure that these are correct, let's, right, let's check. Now, what are we checking? We're checking the original equation, which is way up here. So let me write that down again because I, I kind of lost track here. So here's the equation. Let me make sure I remember it. Yep. Here's the equation we want to check. Right? It's um, x minus the square root of x minus 2 equals 4. Is that right? Yep. So that's the original equation. Sorry, that's, a, that's an x right there. That's an x. So let's start with x equals 3. Let's plug that in and see if that works, right? If I change x to 3, I change this x to 3. Right? Is this true? Well, what's 3 minus 2? 3 minus 2 is 1. And what's the square root of 1? The square root of 1 is 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. And now 3 minus 1 is 2. But hang on, 2 is not 4, right? Now you might think, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe this should have been 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 would be 4. Well, sh sure, that, that would be correct if this were a plus sign. This is not a plus sign here, right? This was a minus sign. Um, yeah, this was definitely a minus sign in the beginning. So, so no, that, this is wrong, right? 2 does not equal 4, which means right, x does not equal 3. So that's, that's a wrong solution. This is an extraneous solution, so cross it out, right? It's not a solution. Now, what about x equals 6? Now, maybe that's an extraneous solution, too. That's possible. If it is, then there's no solution, right? Then we, we got two answers. If none of them work, then there's no solution. Um, but let's see. Let's check. It might actually work here. If we replace x with 6, what do we get? 6 minus the square root of 6 minus 2 does that equal 4? Well, 6 minus 2 is 4, but the square root of 4 is 2. And 6 minus 2 is indeed 4. 4 equals 4. So it turns out this is a solution, right? No question about it. We did get an answer, and it's x equals 6. OK, so yeah, so the original the original problem was here. We wanted to solve this equation, and we did get a solution, x equals 6. That's the only solution, right? 
However, we did get x equals 3, and just to emphasize that this is not a solution, right? This was an extraneous solution. All right, so one answer is correct, right? We got two answers originally, when we, right? Because when you get a quadratic equation, you typically do get two solutions, and we got two solutions, 3 and 6. But only one of them worked, right? The 3 did not work, the 6 did work. So this has one solution, and only one solution, x equals 6. Okay, I think we can do one more. Um, so here we want to solve the equation x equals negative 3 plus the square root of x, uh, 7x plus 9. Okay, let me say that again. x equals negative 3 plus the square root of 7x plus 9. That's the equation, and we want to solve for x. Well, I mean, this looks kind of funny because it's like, wait a minute, x equals, isn't this the solution? Well, no, because you can't have x on both sides, right? In other words, we're looking for an answer. We're looking for x equals what number? And if you don't know what x is, then you don't know what x is. You don't, if you don't have an x on the right, you don't know what x is on the left. So, so no, no, we're not solved for x, right? And what's worse is that we have on the right side here, we have the square root, but we have this negative 3 here. And remember, the first step is to isolate the square root by itself. So to get the square root by itself, we're going to have to add 3 to both sides. So I'm just going to do that on the next step here. Oops. 7x plus 9. So, yep, we just want to add the 3 to both sides. And when we do that, on the left side, we get x plus 3. And on the right side, we get the square root of 7x plus 9. So far, so good. All right. All right, what's step two? Step two is to get rid of the square root, and we do that by, as always, squaring both sides. You square the left, you square the right side, and then you square the left side as well. Okay, so remember when you square this, please don't put x squared plus nine, right? We know that's not it. It's x plus three times x plus three. And this, of course, right, the, these two's cancels, so you just end up with 7x plus 9. Okay. So FOIL this out, and you'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right. Where did the 6x come from? 3x plus 3x, outside plus inside, right? Okay. Oops, there's the 9. All right, so this is going to be another quadratic equation, so we want to get 0 on the right. So we're going to subtract the 7x from both sides, and we can subtract the 9 from both sides as well. And on the left, we get x squared. That, that's supposed to be a 7, right? 6, 6x minus 7x is just negative 1x. And 9 minus 9 is 0. And everything on the right is also 0, right? So, right? so this, when you simplify this, you just get x squared minus x equals 0. And since I'm running out of space, can I just pull that all the way up here? Right, and you can really take it from here. This is about as easy as it's going to get. How do you solve for x? Well, you factor out an x, right? The GCF here is x. Right? Since there's no constant term, we're not doing the, you know, reverse FOIL, right? We're not looking for two numbers that multiply to 0 and add to negative 1. Just factor out an x. Right. That's, there's an invisible one there, right? And so we have two factors. We have x equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Well, okay, so x equals 0 or when you add 1 to both sides, you get x equals 1. Okay, so two possible answers, 0 or 1. But are they, right? Again, so this is step 3. We're solving. And so step 4, we have to check. So don't forget to check. So here's the original equation. Replace x with 0, and let's see what happens. So if x is 0, we get 0 equals negative 3 plus the square root of 7 times 0 plus 9. 9's under the square root, right? So is that correct? Well, 0 is negative 3 plus the square root of 7 times 0 is 0, 
and 0 plus 9 is 9, right? All right, 0 equals negative 3 plus the square root of 9. This is looking good, right? This is negative 3 plus the square root of 9 is 3. And negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So 0 equals 0. Sorry, my zeros are a little flat here. 0 equals 0, which is correct. So x equals 0 is one of the solutions. What about x equals 1? Okay, so I'm, I'm running out of space. Uh, let me do that down here. Oh, I missed the equation, right? So let me copy down the equation so we know what we're trying to plug in here. x equals negative 3 plus the square root of 7x plus 9. All right, so now we're checking x equals 1. So replace x with 1. And replace this x with 1. 7 times 1 plus 9. So we have negative 3 plus the square root of 7 plus 9. 7 plus 9 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. And negative 3 plus 4, or 4 minus 3, is 1. 1 equals 1? Absolutely, just like 0 equals 0. So as it turns out, both of these answers were correct here. Right? We did not get an extraneous solution in this, in this problem. Oops, sorry. So, right, so this problem actually has two legitimate answers, x equals 0 or x equals 1. We checked them both. They both work. And so, yeah. So just because you have this thing where you get a quadratic equation and you get two solutions doesn't mean that one of them has to be wrong, right? They could both be correct, right? I mean, here one of them was correct. One of them was not correct. It, it could also happen that they're both incorrect. Now, I don't think you're going to see those because those tend to be a little bit more difficult. So, I, I, you know, but it is certainly possible that both answers are wrong. And if both answers are wrong, you just, you just say that there's no solution. Okay. So, um, so I hope that's enough. I, I've been doing, you know, some easier ones, some more difficult ones, but, um, but hopefully this should be enough to be able to do the homework, so good luck with the homework.